Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of our Terraria modding tutorial series. Today we're going to quickly take a look at how we can create chest loot and add it into our world. Now, chest loot is something that happens during the world generation phase of the game. And as such, it can be kind of hard to test whether or not this works because you have to create a new world and uh, check if it runs. Or maybe there's a command you can run that will, uh, you know, put loot inside of a chest that uses this method. But this is, a, as you can see, a post world gen method. And also want to quickly mention that this was once again uh, a request that I saw in the YouTube comments of the last video. So definitely keep them coming and I'll try to cover it if I can cover it. All right, anyways, back to the actual chest. Let's take a look at what we got here. Let's just like take inventory. This is like the, uh, the chest loot uh, .cs file you can see. That's the name of the file right here. And this is in my wizard mod .solution file. So this puts in the enchanted daggers and the fireballs and whatnot and all the scrolls and into the chests, uh, into the world gen. There's not a lot that's going on here. It's really just the enchanted dagger uh, and the scrolls here. As you can see, just a charred scroll, ice scroll, and uh, an enchanted dagger. But even for just those three items, there is a lot that uh, has to go on. And wow, okay, it's been at least uh, a year or two since I've actually looked at this code. And it is a little bit, uh, how should I say it, inefficient. Uh, you can see that I'm doing several loops where I really don't need to be doing any loops. Uh, I can probably just be checking the chests in a single for loop. But you know what? For now, it's kind of easier to read actually for a video. So we'll keep it like this for now. But I would probably put this inside of uh, the other for loop there because there's really no reason uh, to, to have a separate for loop looping a thousand times through all of the chests. But this is done post world gen, so it would be pretty fast. And you're only looping a few thousand times, which I know sounds like a lot. But when it comes to world generation, that's like maybe a second or something like that. So I wouldn't really worry too much about that. I would really not be worried about performance, especially if you are a uh, beginner to being a modder. To really don't worry about performance. Just get something to work first. And then if you have performance issues, you can work on those later. All right. So let's take a look now. We've already checked out our usings. So we know we have everything that we need. Uh, this is in my drops subfolder and the class name is chest spawn and it is derived from mod system. So let's see if we can take a look at mod system real quick. All right. So we have a bunch of these things. Look at that. We even have our add recipes. It's defined in here. Post add recipes. Interesting. Add recipe groups. And on world load, unload, screen position, modify, transform matrix. So this is like the actual uh, three by three matrix I would imagine but it's essentially just an affine transformation that will actually uh, concatenate a bunch of matrices, translation matrices, scaling matrices, rotation matrices together in order to actually render something onto the screen. All right, that's very mathy though, and we're not, definitely not gonna get into that. That's something that is more advanced, but we wanna find the thing we're actually looking for, which is post world gen. So let's go ahead and just uh, control F. There we are, all right, nice. And the comments say, use this method to place tiles in the world after world generation is complete. So based on these comments here, we can kind of infer that this is indeed a function that is called right after the world has finished generating, which is good because that's what we want to do. Once we finish generating all the chests, we want to do one kind of pass through the world and just uh, insert all the loot into our chest. So I can already see some code here that is probably not going to be very useful. Uh, probably left over for when I wanted to add more than one item to a chest, but that is kind of irrelevant. So I'm just going to quickly get rid of that real quick, just so I can simplify this uh, a tiny bit. Okay, there we go. And you can see the main loop here. We're overwriting the post world gen method, and we're doing a main loop here. We're looping through the number of chests in the world. I believe the world generates about a thousand chests uh, every time it creates a world. I think that that's like the max number. Uh, at least I, I'm pretty sure. That's what I saw in the documentation. So that's why we're looping for less than 1000. And then we'll say chest chest equals main dot chest chest index. This is just getting an object or a class of type chest uh, of the index. So we're just basically getting all the chests that there possibly are. And then we are saying, all right, this is going to be the array of items that we want to add uh, into the chest. And you can see it is an int subscript and subscript just means an array. So this is an array of integers. And we're saying item, we're calling this array items to place in chest. And you can see we're using these curly braces here, which is just a way of initializing uh, an array. And we're only adding one item to it. As like I said earlier, I was uh, messing around with, as I said earlier, this is probably left over from when I wanted to, you know, have more than one item uh, added into the chest. But for now, we only really need one. And, you know, it's also kind of nice to just have an individual uh, chest item to place in, in each of the, um, 
in each of the slots. So having an array isn't, isn't really necessary, but this is kind of nice if you want to mess around with it uh, and, you know, maybe add a bunch of different types all at once. You can get pretty efficient with it if you want to, but when it comes to uh, my implementation of it, uh, I only needed to add one item, so this will work perfectly fine. Okay, awesome. So we create that array and then we create an enchanted dagger num. So this is the actual number of the item that's going to be inserted into the chest. And I use the main dot range function. And this is basically just a random range integer function that takes a random number between the minimum and maximum. So between 23 and 51. Okay, awesome. And then we check if the chest is valid. So if chest is not equal to null, it just means that if the chest uh, pointer is valid right here. And, or the object is valid. I shouldn't say pointer. Uh, and main.tile of chest.x, chest.y of the tile type is equal to a container. That is, make sure that that chest is actually a container, uh, or at least the tile at the chest position is a container, because what we don't want to actually put loot into something that isn't a container. That wouldn't make sense. And then the tile that's at the chest x, y position's tile frame x. So this is interesting, because this is uh, what actually determines like the type of chest uh, that you're going to be putting something in. And just for the sake of uh, not getting any compile errors, I'm just going to quickly undo <laughs> that bit of code I did there. It doesn't really have any effect, but I use it below here, and I'm not looking to refactor anything right now. But anyways, back to what I was saying earlier, this code right here, where we're checking the tile at a given x position. Now, tile is uh, a member of the main class, and a tile has an x and a y position. Uh, so we're just basically getting our chess position within the game world and we're checking its tile frame x. Now, we actually go into the chest and take a look at what this is, or we'll go into the tile class and see what that is. But essentially, this is actually what determines the kind of chest that it is. So this zero right here means it is a wooden chest. Uh, don't ask me why they do it like this. I'm really not sure why that's the case, but just know that this is a wooden chest. And if we scroll down here, we can say, we can see this says golden chest, and we have a one times 36. And over here, we have an 11 times 36 for the ice chest. Now, uh, I definitely will be linking you guys to a place where you can find all the different IDs for the chest. But uh, I wish they would let you see that because how are you supposed to know what this means? I figured out what it meant because uh, I saw a page on like the wiki or like if you decompile the, the chest uh, X and B file, you'll see that the wooden chest is at the top left and the golden chest is next to it and so on and so forth. Those are like the, the indexes of all the chests. But it's a bit hard to tell. There's definitely a way to do it, and I'm probably just missing out on it. Just know that uh, this number right here corresponds to the type of chest. What what does what does a chest have in it? Let's see what what chest has in it. Anything uh, anything interesting? Wow. Okay. So talk about bad implementation of code right here. Look at how cursed this code is. I don't think I have to tell you twice that this is cursed code. Imagine manually defining 51 different elements of an array. That's probably why this file is like 2,000 lines of code or, or longer. Yeah, look at that. It's just all, almost all of it is just like defining arrays. If anyone here ever makes a chess system, don't do it like this. You know, I love the Terraria devs and, you know, the Tmod loader devs, but man, you're going to have to do a little bit better on that one. <laughs> Anyways, let's take a closer look at the actual for loop now. Uh, over here, we already described what this if statement is doing. It's just basically checking if this chest is the chest that we want and it is a valid chest or end container and then we're doing an inner for loop. So this inner for loop actually loops through the chest itself. So we're looping through all the slots of the chest, and then we're finding an empty one right here, which is this if statement. If the inventory index.type is zero, meaning that that slot that we're looking at is currently empty, then we want to insert our own custom load into that slot, which is of the inventory index. That is the uh, index of the slot that we want to put our item into. So let's take a look at this code now chest.item.setDefaults. So setDefaults is a member function of uh, the chest, right? And this will place this item that we want to place in there. So this is the array that we created, remember, right here. And the array of index zero. Remember that this variable is just, like I said, shorthand of saying zero, which is why I was like, this is ridiculous. Why did I have this super long thing there? But uh, it was because I had an array and I wanted to uh, actually like, you know, choose the uh, index of the array I want to put in the chest for like a randomized chance. But just know that this is the same exact thing as uh, this, right? Putting a zero there is the same exact thing. Okay, awesome. And by the way, if you are having some trouble understanding what uh, an array is, I will be making videos on just kind of general programming in C++, C Sharp, 
and that kind of stuff. So definitely be on the lookout for those if you want to learn a little bit more. But in the meantime, I definitely recommend checking out some other videos uh, if you need some help on that. Or you can ask me in the Discord. I will be glad to explain it to you. Um, and then down over here, we have our chest item of our inventory index. So we're accessing the whatever index is empty, right? We want to select that. Uh, we just filled it with our item up here. This is what this line does. I'll comment this out as well. Fills the empty slot with our item. And then this right here, this sets the amount of item in that slot. So this right here will just say, okay, we'll change the stack of that item equal to this number that we said, which is a random number between 23 and 51. So just like that, we've just inserted our own loot uh, into the chest. And that's it. This right here is uh, arbitrary stuff right here. This just is <laughs> supposed to uh, change the item that is put into the chest uh, every each time that you loop through and find an empty value, which is actually the whole reason why I made this in the first place. And then right below this, we have our inventory index plus plus. Now this is actually very cursed. Um, I don't know why I do this. This is really, really bad. What am I doing here? Uh, let's get rid of that real quick. And we'll also get rid of the break here. Or actually, in this case, we can keep the break. But uh, if you're wondering why I just got rid of that one line of code there, the inventory index plus plus, uh, notice that we already do that in the for loop, right? Why are we doing it again? That's just going to increment our index that we're checking by uh, another one. And that's kind of strange because that means we might actually skip an index in our chest. Because, right, if we're at zero, and then we add one, then we're at index one. And then once we find an empty slot, then we add another to the index. And say we wanted to add two items, right? Then we would be skipping the next empty slot and then adding it to the other slot. So we'd have like this uh, this gap in our chest and we don't want that. So that's why I'm getting rid of that right there. That is uh, very, very bad. But it, you can't see it because uh, I was only creating one item at a time. And I bet you, I still have it over here, which uh, brings me to my next point, this break statement right here will uh, break out of a for loop. It'll stop executing any kind of loop or uh, switch statement and things like that. So whenever you're done looping, you just call break. In my case, once I set that item uh, or input my item into the chest, I will immediately break because I only have one item. But uh, you wouldn't want that there if you were creating more than one item. So in case that you had, like, you know, you add another item to this array, uh, you would probably want to get rid of that break statement unless you only did want one item, which in, that, in case you can keep it there. Okay, well, hopefully now that the uh, chests have been demystified, let's go ahead and test the code. Now, also make sure that uh, you have everything right here. You want to make sure that you kind of debug your code before testing it this time around, because this is the kind of code that if you don't get it right the first time, would be really, really annoying to have to redo, because that means whenever you want to test it, you're going to have to create a, a new world, and that's no fun. So let's go ahead and go into single player, and that is very loud. Okay, let's just turn all that sound off. Okay, I'll go into our single player and we'll go into R and we'll create a new small world. All right, make it as fast as possible. Mess around here. Oh, there's a chest. Let's open it. Hopefully it'll have our enchanted dagger just as we expected. And there's also a few other things like the uh, living scroll and, and the uh, tier one arrow pouch, but that code is kind of separate from what I showed you guys. And if we actually change this because I didn't change this value, so it's hard to test it, but uh, I'm going to change this to 100 and 151 literally just so we can uh, make sure that this is working the way that it is intended. And I'm going to build and reload real quick. Make sure you have always build and reload, otherwise uh, weird stuff is going to start to happen. Okay, here is another chest in a new world. Let's go ahead and open it up, and hopefully we have 100 and, yep, 141 enchanted daggers, exactly what we expected from a random number between 100 and 151. All right, that's going to about sum it up for this video. If you guys want to learn a little bit more about chess and the different types that you can uh, check and insert your loot into, then definitely go and download the X and B, or I'll probably just provide an image file so that way it's a little bit easier for people to reference. Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll, just give, I'll just give you guys an image file that uh, you know labels all of the chests and whatnot so you can easily input loot into them yourself. But uh, that is how you add chess loot to your game. It is one of the coolest things, uh, at least in my opinion, that you can do. If you guys want to support my future content or maybe just have some fun with the community or get some of your questions answered, you can join the Discord with the link in the description. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.